and welcome to the San Diego Community College Football Report with my co-host, Raymond Brown of sdfootball.net. I'm Ramon Scott of eastcountysports.com with your only community college, junior college, JC football show, Raymond Brown. You're out there at games every Saturday. We're not winging it here. We've been following the scene for years, as you do at sdfootball.net. And we're going to get together this season and talk community college football. Why? Because no one else will. And you'll be out there covering the big games this season in our King of the County uh, segment. Uh, Raymond, it's going to be a good year this year. I don't know what we could take away from week one. We'll be here every week reviewing the games and then previewing them as well for uh, the entire season. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Can't wait to showcase these athletes. Um, I love JUCO football. A lot of hungry, great athletes out there trying to um, earn their second chance, uh, trying to get uh, trying to get that four year scholarship. So um, it's a grind, and I respect it. And it's going to be a fun season. Yeah, no doubt. This is the stepping stone. I mean, there's no reason why our athletes shouldn't pursue, as you you've said on many a show. Uh, pursuing the junior college route. And I'm only reminded that this week as one of our, we'll be showing some uh, artwork from our man, uh, Vanilla Gorilla, who was out at Grossmont this week. And he made a note to me as he was also covering the Aztecs this weekend. And who did he see, of course, on the Idaho State sideline? None other than uh, one of the top linebackers from last year, Jagger Giles. So uh, you can, this is the, this is how to still get there. And I think that our team, we cover it from Grossmont's perspective a little bit, but with our four teams, look, no one's doing it. Let's do it this season. Let's cover the four teams. Let's find out who is the king of the county. Raymond, we're going to start off uh, usually with Grossmont, but maybe when we start to get the our teams matched up, that's when you'll be uh, highlighting them as well with your videography. Uh, pursuing the king of the county and you mentioned to me all four teams will play each other this year anyways uh in the season opener a little bit uh uh i want to say troublesome for grossmont i mean they've got some talented athletes not necessarily you don't want to lose uh, to east la but i will say that east la last two seasons that's not some of the old East LA that we've seen, they've had a pretty good record over the last two years. They get the better of Grossmont this past weekend uh, up on the Mesa uh, this week, East LA with the win over the uh, Griffins here. Uh, I know you checked out the uh, info on this one and I'm going to feature some of the artwork as you talk about the game from our own uh, PJ Panamianco Vanilla Gorilla. And oh, right before we start, Raymond, look at these brand new Grossmont uniform. This is the best uh, you've seen probably uh, 15 to 20 editions of Grossmont College football. Congratulations uh, to Coach Z there and uh, Coach Jordan. These are uh, too bad. I don't want to say they played a good game, they almost came back. But if they end up playing as good as these jerseys look, great job. A gross one. I don't know who made the call up there, Coach Jordan, but look at these Under Armour uniforms. They're great. Yes, Under Armour makes some great uniforms, and uh, gross minds ain't no different, man. That green and gold look as opposed to the green and white they usually go with, um, I love it, man. Uh, so hopefully their uh, play can match their drip. Because <laughs> um, gross mind, uh, <laughs> traditionally, they're, they're usually one of the best teams in the county, but for some reason, uh, they've been falling on hard times these days but uh, hopefully they can get it together soon. And um, it was a great back and forth matchup. Um, I don't think Grossmont led this game, but they they hung in there uh, against a tough East LA team and uh, put up 38 points. So uh, yeah, man, uh, first first game of the week, it's going to be some um, rust there, but uh, hopefully they get it together soon. It was Trenton Giles, the quarterback of uh, – the Griffins, who hails from Grossmont High, and Nathan Temple, the other quarterback for the Griffins from Santana. The pair combined for 350 yards and five touchdowns, but East L.A. still got the victory. Also, a uh, star right now, I would say, uh, uh, Elijah Gooden-Dotton out of Texas has come in. He had six catches for 
uh, 206 yards and two touchdowns, Ryan Roddick, the former Grossmont quarterback who had a good rapport with Giles, with the Foothillers, he caught three touchdown passes. Everyone's saying, you know, that Roddick would break out this year with Grossmont, and he did so in that first game. But Grossmont uh, led 14-7. to seven. Uh, Giles hit Gooden Dotton with an 80-yarder just uh, – Late in the first quarter for a 14-7 lead, it was Gooden Dotton's second touchdown of the quarter. In the second quarter, Roddick caught a 53-yard touchdown from Temple to tie the game. Grossmont eventually trailed by two touchdowns. Then they started to make a comeback. Brennan Sanders, uh, who's held a couple of roles in his football career as a Grossmont foothiller, he did the field goal kicking. He had a 38-yarder. Roddick eventually caught a 13, a 17-yard pass from Giles to make it 42 to 38. East LA uh, adds a field goal with two minutes left in the game for the winning margin. So East LA over Grossmont on Saturday. Um, I have a feeling Grossmont feels like uh, this was one that they should have won uh, They uh, against East LA. Grossmont stepping up there. Uh, they're playing a little bit tougher schedule this year with the division, with a change. So uh, I think this was an okay showing for the Griffins moving forward. Um, they might have a tough test coming up. We'll preview the games in just a moment. All right. Uh, Raymond, uh, Palomar, your current number one team uh, in the county, they went up to Moore Park and they rallied from an early deficit to win this one. Uh, yeah, uh, Palomar is definitely my number one team. Uh, they beat uh, Mesa in a thrilling overtime game last year. Uh, great start to the season this year. Uh, great win over a great Moore Park team. Uh, Jaden White. Looked good, 11 for 24, got 100 yards. Uh, Amari on Ireland, 14 carries, 139 yards and two touchdowns. And uh, Quincy Heroin, uh, two catches, 34 yards. So a uh, great, great win by Polymark. Yeah. Quincy Heroin. Oh, yeah, nice former, yeah, high, yeah, tie, yeah. Uh, tight end. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's good to see. It's good to see these familiar names. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. I think that's a that's real nice to see that he is uh, land in a spot. And uh, well, you said it right now. Your number one, you know, your number one team. So I do want to credit the uh, uh, Palomar defense a little bit for their uh, run stopping, but probably got to clean this up a little bit. Passing uh, uh, Moore Park, four hundred and thirty nine yards through the air. Raymond, uh, typical JC gamer. Uh, their quarterback, McLeod Crowton, 37 of 67 uh, <laughs> in that game. And uh, they ran just, uh, well, they did run like 25 times. So a uh, long game here in this one. But still, Palomar ends up with the victory uh, in this one. Uh, like I said, they had to rally a little bit. DeMarcus Carr, a touchdown, a one-yarder in the second quarter. And then they led 17-14 at halftime. White, 34-yarder, gave them the lead with 9.40 to play in the third. Then Ireland, with a 48-yard run, uh, put them up by 11. Palomar wins over Moore Park. All right, uh, San Diego Mesa did a job. Uh, well, my guy Pep Fernandez came on down to cover here. This one was on YouTube. If anybody checked it out on the uh, Inland Empire Sports Network, they came down here. They follow their San Bernardino Valley team, but Mesa sent them back on the drive home with a 47 nothing victory. I'm not sure you're going to – we'll get to your rankings, but not sure if it's enough to – close the gap necessarily at this point it's not about the wins and losses it's about uh, Raymond's eye test Mesa over uh, <laughs> SBVC in a shutout yeah dominant win for Mesa uh, that program has turned things around over the years uh, yeah I remember back when Mesa was one of the worst teams in the county and now they're one of the best they're consistently winning uh, bowl games and they start the year off like this a great game by Tavion Tate um, 12 carries for 69 yards and a touchdown. Kadir Diop, two receptions, 55 yards and a touchdown. And Jaden Cortell with an interception on the other side of the ball. 
I like the way Mace is playing this year. I think they got a chance to be number one soon, that they got to beat Palomar. That's, I'm sure that's on their mind because that loss last year was uh, really disappointing, the losing double overtime at home when you've got that long uh, winning streak in the county. So uh, this this was a very impressive win for Mesa, and I, I think they keep it going. And uh, just to point out, you were talking about those local names. Look, right now, the starter, you know, we, what we see in uh, community college ball a lot of times is, you know, a sharing of the duties. Right now it looks like uh, Richie Colmanero is the quarterback, the former Saint uh, currently is the starting quarterback. But how about Jamie Odom? He returns to Mesa College, the former uh, Grossmont College quarterback. He went up to Riverside. Uh Oh, maybe uh, we'll hear from uh, Jamie. Uh, I know he'll uh, catch this. Uh, I think he'll catch this show. So shout out to him. He was eight for 16 for 88 yards. Cole Monero was seven and 11 for 125 yards. Uh, Jamie, well, list him as James. I think we'll still call him Jamie. Uh, hit me up, yeah. Jamie. Let's see. Maybe we'll get Jamie on the show here. Uh, he had two touchdowns. Cole Monero had one touchdown pass. Tavion Tate had a touchdown as well. Mesa led the game. That looks like a real good situation, actually, for Jamie up there uh, with uh, Mesa. They've also got former Grossmont Hiller, uh, Geo Burns, uh, on the mm -hmm. team, and he had a 24-yard touchdown pass from Odom in that game. Odom had a one-yard touchdown run as well. Also, uh, you know, we know that uh, – there can be some good kicking in, in community college ball. It's kind of a place where kickers kind of get their jump a little bit. We see, you know, in D1, a lot of times kickers come in as juniors. Uh, how about Ryan Harris, a 50-yarder for Mesa in the first half? They led 41-0 at halftime and went on to the victory. All right, El Camino takes uh, taking on uh, uh, Southwestern here. Uh, certainly a tough opponent, hoping Southwestern can uh, improve and get it together here a little bit. I think, you know, El Camino probably pretty solid, though. And they led 35 nothing at halftime, went on to the win. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Southwestern has fallen on hard times. Uh, I don't, did they, I think they only won one game last year uh, since the coach of uh, Ed Cradbury. Uh, so they're, they're uh, turning their program around, trying to get things going with a new coach. Um, former Mar Vista quarterback, uh, Alex Woji, he had an okay game. Oh, yeah. Uh, 20. Yeah, 22 for 34, 274 yards. Wow. Uh, fortunately, he threw an interception, but uh, still a solid showing by him. I'm glad to see him still uh, playing. Uh, yeah, man, uh, I think it's going to be a long uh, bounce back for Southwestern. Man. Um, but okay. we'll, we'll see. It's, it's, these are two years. Uh, it could be a two-year turnaround. This is JC, so it's, it's not like. They got to develop players for four years. You only get two. Well, so, just the um, fact that uh, uh, Wojcik threw 34 passes definitely uh, is of interest to me because really Southwestern had gotten uh, over the last couple of years pretty pedestrian uh, on offense going through a, a series of quarterbacks. Uh, one year, uh, you know, three or four guys were taking snaps, and I don't think they ever really found their guy. Uh, I would think Wojcik, uh, if he's thrown 34 passes, uh, that's – uh, that's something a little bit new right now for this Southwestern team. Uh, Jordan Benton, five receptions, 85 yards. Jovan Young, four receptions for 72. Lenza Robinson, six receptions for 40. And Raymond Flores had four receptions. So uh, this is a little bit of a different style here for Southwestern. Now, they weren't much of a match for a decent team here like El Camino, who had a very balanced attack, uh, nearly 300 yards through the air in the game. So uh, El Camino with the victory. All right, Raymond, I don't know if anything's changed. Uh, I don't, this is our first show. If anybody, maybe you can tell us what your preseason rankings were. I don't think uh, the, no, maybe they could change. So why don't you tell us what you had before the season? And then if that changed, especially those top two spots, uh, you already tipped your hand a little bit. You have Palomar ahead of Mesa going into the season because of the result last year and uh, give us a top four going in and uh, does it stay the same? Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, these rankings are based on how the four teams fare against each other or the state polls, the, the uh, strength of schedule, none of that counts. So I got Palomar still number one until they get beat by a, okay. um, until they get beat by a San Diego County team. They're sort of my JC, my uh, Juco version of Lincoln. 
You know, they're number one until somebody beats them. But number two and very close is uh, San Diego Mesa. The way they're playing, they could be number one, but I want to see how they do against uh, Palomar before I put them up there. And uh, number three, Grossmont, uh, that's probably too low for what they're usually used to. Uh, they're, they're a great program, historic program, national titles, uh, multiple wins, multiple uh, wins in the playoffs. But they're number three right now until we see what they can do. And uh, last, but maybe least, uh, Southwestern, uh, number four. Um, they're still trying to get it together under a new coaching staff. But uh, hopefully uh, things will start to look up for them. But uh, that's that's my four right now. And uh, sure. things going to change. It's a long season ahead. So we'll, we'll see. All right, appreciate you, and we'll just go over this week's schedule, maybe make a few predictions, but we're just here to update everyone on the games this week and shout out these players, and we're going to do so uh, every week right here on the show. Short and sweet, no doubt about it, this week Grossmont will travel up to Antelope Valley. I would imagine this is a, a you know, a game that Grossmont can compete in. I'm sure there'll be uh, underdogs here, probably 10 or 11 points in this one. But I think uh, seeing the, looking at the personnel on Grossmont this year, spoke with Coach Jordan before the season. He was optimistic, but he was concerned about the upgrade in schedule this year, which is not a, a great thing right now for Grossmont, considering, like you said, they've been a sub-500 team for the last few seasons. Uh, but I do like uh, the personnel uh, currently for the Griffins, and I do think they can compete and stay in this game here against Antelope Valley. I mean, I like Nate Temple ever since uh, he was at Santana. He was one of my favorites. I also like Trenton Giles. I saw him upset uh, El Camino a couple years ago. Uh, two great quarterbacks, but I think they need to figure out which one they want to go with full time. I think uh, until they do that, they have to depend on their run game, which uh, Elijah Good and Donson's running the ball pretty good. So if they're running the ball well, then I guess quarterback ain't too much of a concern. But I think they need to find a, a starter and a stick with them. Okay. And I, I like both of them. Either one of them, I think, are pretty could uh, yeah. lead this team pretty well. That but uh, hopefully, Gross might get the win. I don't know much about Antelope Valley. I'll do my research as we go along. I'll start to do more research on these teams outside the county. But uh, I'm 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 rooting for Grossmont, of course. Well, you give us the updates on the players, and I'll tell you that Antelope Valley is expected to win this game. So go Grossmont. And uh, <laughs> judging from the uh, way that the Griffins are doing business right now, I would say do not expect uh, at this point unless one of these guys. And look, Giles has one more year of experience uh, on Temple. I believe they're the same. Uh, it, but Giles played quite a bit last year. Uh, so I think that's where the uh, the uh, you talk about him being uh, maybe ahead of Temple. I don't know. The statistics are very similar. Temple through the two touch. I think you're going to see a total split of the time, unless one of the two can really uh, just take it by the horns and and uh, take charge. But uh, don't see it happening as far as um, one getting more playing time than the other at this point. Uh, I don't think there was anything that happened in that game regarding to injury. I know that in the game against East LA, East LA actually had some uh, injuries in their secondary that kind of uh, affected them and Grossmont uh, was able to play a great game against them. Okay. Uh, San Bernardino is going to come on to take Southwestern. Hey, this is a chance Southwestern could take advantage. We saw San Bernardino look, Mesa's a great team. So don't be swayed by that 47, nothing score. I don't think San, San Bernardino Valley is uh, improved at all over their past couple of additions, but they were playing a very good team. Now they're playing someone that, uh, you know, they probably feel like they could go in and beat. Southwestern should feel the same way. They should feel like we're at home. We should win this game. And I think I've got the uh, uh, Jags here probably favored by a touchdown. Yeah, I got Southwestern as well, but I think San Bernardino Valley is going to come in tough because I don't think they're happy about how they played uh, Mesa last week. So um, they're, they're going to come in ready to um, show and prove. So, um, but I'm going with Southwestern, I think. I think it's going to be a, a fair uh, competitive game, but uh, I think Southwestern pulls it off. Yeah, like I said, just crazy with Southwestern uh, going to more of a passing. You know, it seems like to me that we could end up seeing some uh, points here. I know they only scored 13 points last week. I mean, they were playing El Camino. I would think in this game, uh, you know, 
four touchdowns. I think they can get three or four touchdowns here and might be enough to get it done against the San Bernardino Valley team. And uh, I believe, I don't know if they'll come back down, but like I said, my, my man, shout out my man Pep Fernandez. They came down to uh, show the game on YouTube against Mesa. They lost 47 nothing. so maybe they'll come down and – Maybe this one will be on YouTube. Uh, check it out. It's uh, IE Inland Sports on YouTube. Uh, they do a great job covering the uh, Inland Empire. Uh, they've even had me on their show, Raymond, talking a little high school football back in the day when uh, Helix matched up with, like, Cajon. Remember with uh, Jalen uh, uh, Jake Daniels uh, going up against Helix uh, that year with the yeah. Cajon Cowboys? All right. Here we go with Mesa at Cerritos. Real good test here for Mesa. They got they have to know in the back of their minds that they are going to be underdogs. I would think to the Falcons here, but uh, no reason why they couldn't go in and win. And I like you talk about two quarterbacks. I don't care. I like uh, what they might have going if they've got uh, uh, these two quarterbacks uh, right now at Mesa, including uh, Jamie Odom. Uh, yeah, I like those two quarterbacks as well. Uh, Richie Culminator did some um, great things at Eastlake, oh, yeah. and he did some great things at the uh, St. Augustine, too. Yeah, don't forget that. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. And Jamie Odom, man, an amazing career at Grossmont. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a tough game for Mesa on the road. Um, I know teams are starting to uh, see how good Mesa is. I know they're gunning for them. So um, it's going to be a great game. I think uh, Mesa. I think Mesa can pull it off. It might be a little upset, but I think they can um, hold them to uh, hold it close to the end of the game and uh, come back from there. Because uh, this this team is pretty clutch, man. It's it's hard to beat Mesa. They're they're a very clutch team. They can uh, pull it off at the end. Uh, hopefully, they kept that same spirit this year, and um, should be a great game. I I got Mesa uh, pulling off the win. Yeah, Coach Watkins doing a great job uh, right now with Mesa. Uh, I'm a big fan of his, and he's got it going on. Look, I think we can, you know, a little bit of comparison opponents here. We talked about Grossmont going up against Antelope Valley this week. It was last week Cerritos played Antelope Valley and beat them, as expected, 40-6. to six. So, uh, you know, that's uh, probably what was expected. I mean, uh, Cerritos, uh, pretty good. Mesa, pretty good, too. This is a really good game this week. Uh, from our matchups. Uh, but this one's pretty good, too. Our last matchup, El Camino, taking on uh, Palomar in this one. Raymond, and, uh, well, this is our only, uh, let's see, is this our only, you know, Southwestern's at home. But uh, El Camino comes down to play Palomar in this one. It has to be, a clo- I would think, a close game. I think Palomar can win, but uh, El Camino, they might be a slight favorite. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game for Palomar. I uh, hope they win, but El Camino is uh, tough this year. Uh, it's at Palomar, so that means it's uh, Palomar don't have a stadium, don't they? Still play at Escondido. Play at Escondido High, huh? Okay. I hope Palomar wins, but um, I'll go with El Camino in a close one. Uh, in that game last week, I mean, we already, of course, talked about El Camino, so you can almost start to. Uh, compare a little bit some of those results in that game we already talked about uh, Southwestern you know they did get those two those two scores that they had uh, were late touchdowns in the last five minutes El Camino was pitching a shutout uh, against uh, the uh, Jaguars last week in fact they ended up with the same amount of passing passing yards but it was total yardage was 521 to 305 in favor of El Camino they held Southwestern to just 31 yards rushing so a good defense there and uh, well I'm gonna certainly root for Palomar but I've got El Camino as a slight favorite uh, this is gonna be a close game and this is gonna be a real Good game at Embry Stadium for sure between El Camino and Palomar. All right, Raymond, we're going to get highlights from you this season whenever our some of our teams are going to meet up in the uh, King of the County battle this year. Uh, you made your rankings, Raymond. I'll put you on the spot in week one as we get out of here. Will it be uh, 
I want to give Grossmont Southwestern all due respect. Maybe they can pull off an upset somewhere because then you'll have to make the decision, I think, if there's two, three, and one teams, don't you? Who right now can win that game? Weeks down the line, preseason prediction here, Raymond, uh, the number one team, Mesa or Palomar, with all due respect to our other two teams. Uh. I think uh, if we're looking at it on paper right now, I think Mesa has a better team. I think they're more dominant, and um, they're going to remember that overtime loss last week. So I know that's um, in the back of their minds. That's going to be a great game. I think uh, I think Mesa is going to pull it off in a, thr- in a thriller. All right. Well, we'll get to it when we get to it. Thanks yeah, they're number two right now, but I think they end the year at number one. And I think they're better on paper than uh, the other three teams. I know one thing, you'll be there checking it out, and you'll be uh, covering it for us each week. We want to thank, and hey, if any of the colleges want to reach out, we'd love to have you join us here on the Community College Report. Uh, look, I, you know, there's not a lot of coverage anymore. I mean, even the uh, newspaper has kind of dropped it. So let's carry the torch, Raymond, for something that we both have quite an affinity for. I've followed the Grossmont College Athletic Program for I don't know, 35 years or more. So uh, we're going to cover all four of our county teams because they deserve it. Uh, They don't need to be uh, put on the back burner uh, by anybody here uh, in the media. So uh, we'll be with you. I know they show some highlights on the on the TV channel, but uh, we'll be here with you each week. All right. For Raymond Brown, I'm Ramon Scott. Thank you for joining us for the San Diego Community College Football Report. We'll see you next week.